Hi, this is 100 and 100, where we are reviewing 100 VR games in 100 days. Today we are looking at Stormland. Stormland is a much anticipated title that has been published by Oculus VR and was created by Insomniac Games. This is an expansive, immersive, very high quality VR experience and we're excited to talk more about it with you today. Our VR Gear game reviews cover as many aspects of the game as possible so that you can make an informed decision before you try or buy one of these VR titles. Stormland is one of the most exciting releases of the year and we really enjoyed playing this one. <laughs> to start off with our game review, let's talk about getting up and running with Stormland. Stormland is an Oculus exclusive, so you're not going to find this one on any of the other VR stores. So you'll need an Oculus Rift or a Rift S to play the game. It doesn't work on the Quest yet. The price of this game is $39.99 and the download file is a whopping 15 gigabytes. And so we set the download and left the room and waited until it finished and went and had lunch. But after the download completes, installation is automatic and then you'll be up and running in the game. As you start into the game, there isn't much of a menu as much as it is a tutorial wrapped in with the first level objective. They get you familiar with the different controls and the different ways to move around. And the game gives you an opportunity early on to determine what type of movement mechanism you'll be most comfortable with while playing the game. It also asks you for your dominant arm and to give you the distance between your hands when they are outstretched to your side. I'm not sure what that was for, but they're just trying to size you up. You can also select in the options menu whether or not you're going to play the game from a standing or sitting position, which we really appreciated. Games like this can be played in a standing position, but when you're moving through the world in a game where you can be in a standing position, you might as well be in a sitting position, and we choose to do this every time, and we sit on a swivel stool so we can rotate in 360 degrees if we need to or want to, but we don't have to stand on our feet the entire time. This game is a story-driven adventure game, and you'll go through a lot of self-discovery as you're trying to reclaim your homeland. There's a lot of puzzles that you need to solve, there's artifacts you need to collect, and there's different skills that you need to master in order to pass through each phase of the game. You'll have a lot of fun as you interact with this world and experience some of the back and forth between the different AIs that would like to take control of your destiny by being the one that talks into your ear and tells you what you're supposed to do next. <laughs> This game is played from the first person perspective and you are the main character of the game. You are a small robot that is trekking through the stormland looking for clues as you're trying to solve a larger puzzle. Interestingly, your memory is represented in the game by faint green outlines of yourself interacting with people from your past. This information is crucial as you're trying to understand how to master a skill or find a certain item that will help you solve whatever problem is ahead of you. For theme and story, this game has a very strong theme and a storyline that is just as powerful and immersive. The whole experience of this game is dictated by the storyline and everything that you're supposed to do next is narrowly focused on the story that you're a part of. As the main character in this game, your memory is the most crucial element in discovering the solution to the current problems that all of the other characters are facing. It's up to you to discover the clues that are hidden in your memory from experiences that you had on this island long ago. The controls for this game were very natural. You use the hand grips to grab things. You can also reach out and grab things that are further at a distance and have them come to you. And you use the trigger to engage a weapon. Or if you're trying to recover health, you grab things with the grip and squeeze them to explode them with the trigger. I'm not sure what these strange little fruits 
actually we're doing, but they seem to increase our health. The controls around movement are also easy to learn, and those can be modified in the options menu. But overall, the controls were very natural, very easy to understand, and as you became accustomed to it, gameplay became a lot more natural. <laughs> For music and sound, this game is a really great game for the sound effects that are included. Everything you interact with has its own custom sound, the world is immersive, and you can hear things from the direction that they are coming from. There's a lot of instruction given to you from the voice in your head, and there's a lot of sound that is coming from things off in the distance. The audio here is crucially important to your success, knowing where the sound is coming from, is very important in gameplay to defend yourself, to find the enemies, to fight off the bad guys. And this game did an exceptional job of mapping really great audio to this really great visual experience. For player movement, this game is not a teleportation game. You will be trekking through the world at a speed that is either immediately fast or accelerates up to the maximum speed. Your left hand will allow you to move forward or backwards, left or right, and your right hand is used to rotate. You can set the rotation degrees in the options menu. We set ours to 30, which was the default, and that allows you to rotate to the right or to the left so that you can see and put things in front of your view. The game is also responsive to your movement in the real world, so if you are rotating in the real world, the game does map to your movement there. Because we are playing on a tethered headset, we don't like to rotate too much in the real world because then we'll get all tangled in our cables. So we use the rotation on the joystick to rotate 30 degrees left or right. This game also has other really fun, interesting movement mechanisms. One of them allows you to use thrusters to glide quickly over what seem to be ice or water. And then there's these anti-gravity grappling hooks that allow you to scale the side of really tall walls. This was really interesting and the implementation of this was very different from what you would experience when you're using the rungs of a ladder to climb up. This was a fun way to ascend walls and this was really well done in Stormland. For motion sickness, I'm gonna be honest, this game is gonna make you motion sick. The longer you spend in it, the more motion sick you're gonna get. If you're not sensitive to motion sickness, you must be a rare species, but this game definitely has a lot of those moments where you will feel that shift in your vision and you won't feel it in your body and you'll immediately feel that sense of motion sickness. If you are used to VR or if you've gotten good at avoiding those types of movements that will cause you motion sickness, good for you. If you're new to VR, this game is likely gonna be a more intense experience for you and you're likely to get motion sick the further you get into the game. Also, the further you get into the game, the quicker you're going to have to move to respond to the threats in your environment. The faster you move in VR, the more likely you are to get motion sick based on this type of movement mechanism. The game does have modifiers to hopefully help people that know what type of movement is best for them to avoid motion sickness, but it's not actually very common for people to know what type of settings will result in less motion sickness. So we would love to see a game like this and all other games that have a lot of movement in VR suggest ways that players can reduce motion sickness when they're sensitive to it. But you'll definitely be motion sick in this game the longer that you play, and we definitely felt motion sick playing this game, and so we had to take a little VRR, virtual reality recovery break, after the game, just so that we could get back on our feet. For environments and immersion, this game was outstanding. We really loved being in the game. We loved the art. We loved the graphics. We loved the audio. We loved looking at our hands. It was actually really satisfying to look down and see our hands in such great detail and interact with the menus with pointed finger on our robot arm. And it was awesome to be able to interact not only with the world, but with our robot bodies. In the game, you're able to see your entire robot body, but you're mostly only able to interact with your hands. It just looks like bent knees below you. Who knows? But for the environment of this game, this one is toward the top of the rankings when it comes to the level of immersion you feel when you're in the game. One item that we would add to a wish list is that you should be able to interact with more items in the environment. It seems like there is a narrow set of items that will respond to your interaction. You have weapons, you have metal hands, 
You have lasers, you can shoot, and only a few of the plant life will respond to your bullets or to your laser. Everything else kind of just absorbs what you're doing. This reduces the level of immersion and it makes the environment seem less convincing. And so while this would be a huge feat to undertake, it would feel a lot more immersive if you could interact with the entire environment and not just a narrow set of the stuff that the game developers have decided will respond to your input. Okay, let's look at the scorecard for Stormland. Starting with the theme and story. This game is getting a perfect 10 out of 10 for theme and story. The story of this game is incredibly well done. The characters are immersive. It's awesome to be a part of the narrative and the theme of being in a wasteland that you are trying to help recover is just very compelling. We had a great time. We're very impressed with the story and the theme of this game, a 10 out of 10. For the controls, there was nothing we would have done different from the controls that we were given. This game is getting a perfect score of 10 out of 10 for controls. Very few games get a perfect score here. Stormland implemented very well the controls. This probably has to do with a title being exclusive. You don't have to accommodate a bunch of different controllers. As a result, you can really nail the controller implementation for the Oculus Touch controllers, and that is exactly what happened here. A 10 out of 10 for controls. For music and sound, this game is also getting a perfect 10 out of 10. When you're walking through this game and you're hearing the different sounds that you are immersed with, you will really feel like this game is deserving of this score. We were impressed with the sounds of the plant life we interacted with, the water that we walked through, the monsters that were in the distance, the spacecrafts that we were on and saw and were being shot at from. The game had a really great audio experience and we're giving it a 10 out of 10. For player movement, we're giving the game a nine out of 10. That is almost a perfect score. There are a few situations where movement becomes difficult to understand or difficult to know how to interact with your environment. And there are a few times when you're trying to boost off of a ledge or grab the ground and you end up grabbing your weapon instead. But these are very small corner cases and so a near perfect score for player movement. For motion sickness, we're giving this game a four out of 10. This is a below average motion sickness score and we're bummed to give it, but it is deserved. There is a lot of player movement in this game that can result in motion sickness. Only the people with the strongest stomachs could possibly avoid getting motion sick in this game as they progress through the different levels and move faster and faster in a game like this. And so a four out of 10 for motion sickness. And finally, for environment and immersion, we're giving this game a 9 out of 10, a near-perfect score. And the only area where we'd love to see some improvement would be more interactivity with more of your environment. Otherwise, the environment was incredibly compelling. The artwork was done very well. The graphics and the sound and the story really were captivating, and we felt incredibly immersed while in this game. And so a 9 out of 10 for environment and immersion. And now for the final score for Stormland VR, we're giving this game an 8.6 out of 10. That is near the top of our scoring range and we were really impressed with this title. It is selling for $39.99 on the Oculus Store only. It's an exclusive to Oculus. And we recommend this game to anyone who wants to jump in and really get into a really compelling story. This has been 100 in 100, where we are reviewing 100 VR games in 100 days. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can be notified tomorrow when we release another VR game review. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.